In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create your own custom animated ships from galleons to airships to spell jammers using tools like Dungeon Draft and Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Although you can really use these assets in any other drawing tools or virtual tabletop tools like Roll20 as well. The video comes with a bunch of free content you can use to try it yourself including a Dungeon Draft Asset Pack and a pre-made Foundry Virtual Tabletop world that features this particular ship here in its three unique designs for each type. Now, to get us started, I've noticed a lot of people have some issues finding the right shape for their ship designs. And for those of you who aren't as creative, I have a very simple tip. Just go on your preferred search engine and find images for plans of miniature ship models. Here you'll find hundreds of unique shapes and designs based on historical and fic fictional ship models. Most of them even have a side and top view to help you build the deck, sails and even all the levels underneath. To import one of these models, you can simply download the image and import it into Dungeon Drive directly. Or, what I prefer to do, is go into some drawing software and figure out the scale you're looking for before you get started. It makes it a lot easier to match the design up with the grid you have in mind. Next, we move into Dungeon Draft and add the ship we've selected to our Trace Image function. Figure out the right opacity and then quickly paint a background for you to start building your ship. I'll get more into building a scrolling background for your preferred virtual tabletop engine later in the video. For now let's focus on getting in ship shape. I actually have a more detailed time lapse where I'm building this ship from scratch. In this video however, I'm going to skip around to some key moments in our design phase, like building the bow of our ship. In my assets, you'll actually find a bunch of more intricately designed fronts. You can simply drop them in, use them as a basis to help your design for those of you who like a more hands-on approach, or find some interesting references online and go all out. Now, as we skip along, you can see the entire ship is already mapped out for us in this plan. All we have to do is make some simple color and design choices along the way. Sails also add a lot of character to our ships once we finish them up. They can remain the same for each type of ship in my opinion, although I do have some magic slash arcane versions of my sails available as well. Painting a scrolling background is also something you can do from scratch in Dungeon Draft. Although it does have its limitations. Exporting a layer of clouds, for instance, can't currently be done without the software adding some sort of shadow map underneath. You can, however, create a basic scrolling background template by making the length of your map a multiple of 8, as all textures in Dungeon Draft are made to be seamless 8x8 tiles. So that will be the point where the top and bottom fold into each other seamless, if you have it scroll in Foundry. Painting on the bottom or the top will obviously require you to do the same on both ends or export it and find a way to connect them outside of Dungeon Draft. Let's say we keep from doing that. We can also add objects to the top and bottom by using the snap function. Adding clouds to the top means you simply need to place them at the same exact spot in the bottom. You can use the edge of the map to center them easily. All the other objects in the map can be placed randomly of course, only the ones on the border of the map you plan to scroll towards matter. I use clouds for both my intergalactic and air maps. Having cloud makes it possible to have your layer scroll at separate speeds for that nice parallax effect giving you more depth. 
Once we're done with our ship designs and background, we can move on to the virtual tabletop like Foundry here and import it into our scenes. All we have to do is make sure that all the animated objects, like our sails, wings and ropes, are not in final export of our ship map. Most of my animated objects have the same name as the objects in Dungeon Draft, so all you have to do is mix and match. Now, to make things more interesting, I've added the token attack shirt to my ship scenes, as it allows me to add things like my sails to a single token. This tool allows me to create a ship and then drag it into any scene I see fit later. Excellent for when your players have purchased a ship and use it to travel around the place. If you'd like to learn more about the token attacker, I highly suggest you go to Bailey Wiki's YouTube, who has a bunch of tutorials on the subject and other subjects I'll approach in this video, like the Parallaxia tool or, for Foundry V10 users, the tile scroll module by Ripper93. This tool allows us to make background scroll along the X or Y axis to make it feel like we're actually moving around. As you can see here, I use two layers on top of each other and simply play them at two different speeds. That gives us a lot more depth on one end and a lot more unique visuals in comparison to just having one tile scrolling in the background. I love using animations like this to take maps to the next level. Having them on loop in scene is one thing. Animations you can trigger are another. For these maps I actually had something particular in mind. Something I originally had planned on animating a 2D FX explosion for. I decided to make life a bit easier on myself and found a nice free asset for it by Alex Redfish on DeviantArt that allowed me to add an explosion animation to my cannons. You'll find a link to this asset in the description below. These animations don't just allow me to fire any single cannon on command, but by using a little piece of script that True Profit helped me build, I can actually let the cannons on my ship fire a volley in either direction. Which is just everything you need for a battle at sea, in the sky or in space. It's one of those things I've wanted to build for such a long time, Having people support me on Patreon has made it possible to explore them, share them, and hopefully see others make use of them for their own adventures. If you'd like to see me tackle more of these projects, be sure to check it out yourself at patreon.com slash crossset. That's it for this video, thanks and see you next time.